Welcome back. So it's been a while. This is a brand new iMac that I've been spending some time setting up. And as I was doing this, I realized mm, this might actually be a good video for Mac users on how I set up my computer. Now I've used a Mac for over 30 years, never used a PC, nothing against PCs, but that's just what I've used. So what I'm going to do today is show you what I do when I get a new Mac and how I set it up, what options, what applications and what type of things that I do to it to get it into the spot that you see now. So the first thing you can see over here is that my dock is actually on the left side of the screen versus down here at the bottom. What is my reason for doing that? Well, really simple. The vertical height here is a whole lot shorter than horizontally. So it just makes more sense and I have a whole lot more room to put this over here on the left side than have it interfering in the bottom. Now I do a lot of work in photography and if I have my dock sticking up here on the bottom, I've only got this much screen to work with versus the whole thing. And especially on my old MacBook Pro, it was a much smaller screen so it is a much larger issue than it is gonna be now. So how did I get my dock over here on the left hand side? And that is really easy. So we're going to scroll down here and go to system preferences. And if you don't have system preferences located, you can always just go into the launch pad. The launch pad brings up your applications and you can easily find it there. But we'll just go ahead and scroll back down here to this. And this is our system preference button right here. And unfortunately, this is as big as it gets. So we'll just put it right here in the center. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit at certain points, but sometimes you're gonna to need to see everything that's going on. Dock, so what do we need? You go up here, try to find the dock. And this is like the first thing that I do because it kind of drives me nuts. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn off automatically hide and show. I don't leave it out here. I prefer to have it hidden away. And there's a couple different reasons and I'll show you as we move on through them. But we're just going to leave it up now so you can see. Now you can see the icons are actually quite small on my dock. And the first thing that I've turned on is this magnification. And what this does is make the application bigger as I hover over it. So anything that I hover over, it makes it larger. And so what I'll do is make these really small so you can see. So as we come over here, it makes it larger. Now I could make this huge, but we're not going to go and do that much. So we'll just go ahead and read this and that looks good. Next thing we have here is the genie effect, and that's just kind of how it hides and shows windows when you, you kind of minimize them. So you come up here and you click this and you hide them. It's just the effect. I don't change any of that stuff. The main things I'm doing is turning on magnification, changing the size, and then I come down here and I turn on this automatically hide and show. And that's basically it. So now when I come over here, it will show that. Now, if you notice, there is a short delay. And the reason they do that is if you're trying to do something over here, you don't want that to pop up. So you need to just kind of hold that for a second and then it will pop up. And that is what I change on my dock. So the next thing that will come over here and we'll just touch on general real quick. I don't really change a lot of stuff. I've changed my default browser to Chrome. I'm using the dark mode. The main reason for dark mode is I do have to look at a computer a lot and having it bright all the time kind of bugs my eyes. And truthfully, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting used to this large screen. It does give, it did give me headaches for the first few days, but gotten better now and don't seem to bother me. I did move the computer a little bit further away. Let's head back into system preferences and we're going to come over here to mission control. Sounds like a movie, but what we're going to do here in mission control is this kind of gives you quick keys of how certain aspects function. Now here's the quick key. So we have mission control. If you want to activate it, you can select any of these options to make it work. I don't actually use those, but if you do want to use those, you can, per you can easily do that. So if you want to show your desktop, you can make it F11. You can come over here. You can also change it to a mouse button. But for what I use is actually something called hot corners. So we're going to come down here and click this and this pops up. So you have four options on hot corners. You have this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. And I don't have anything allocated right now to my top left hand corner, but I have application windows here. And these are all your different options. If you go to the minus, that's just going to select nothing. I have mission control selected here. 
and I have put display to sleep. So we won't be doing that, but if I go down here, my computer will just go right to sleep. And it's a whole lot easier than clicking on the finder and coming up here and going sleep. All I have to do is boom, down there in the corner, and it is gone. So Mission Control brings up a bunch of different windows. So let me open up some windows here and I'll show you how this works. So I'll go up here, bam, just like that. Mission Control pops up. We get both of the desktops, but different windows. So if I wanna get onto this application, I can just on it. I can go back up here to Mission Control. I can go, go back up here to Mission Control, click here. That's how that works. Application windows just brings up my applications. It's just like the Genie effect, but it brings it up much quicker. So here, remember there's that, that delay when I do it. And down here, it makes it pop up really fast. So that's the difference between doing the effects. Is it similar? Yes. Do I use both? Actually, yes. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. That lets you customize your computer. So we're gonna go ahead and then get rid of that. Next thing that I do is I come down here to keyboard. And this is kind of an odd one. So right here it says show keyboard viewer and emojis. So it's right here. You see this? That's what we want to select right there. And if you come up here and you look right here, you're going to see that little symbol. So we've got this little symbol right here and it says show emojis and show viewer. If I turn that off, that turns into this little flag right here and you can't see it. Okay. So we're going to turn it back on. And what this does is bring up a keyboard, a special keyboard. So if I come down here and I hit keyboard, I don't really use emojis. It brings up my keyboard. And then if I hit this little button right here, notice I get all those weird funky symbols and you never know where they're at on the keyboard. So here I could just click on this and type in a copyright symbol or I can find out what the copyright symbol is here and here. And if I was to turn this off, I'll notice that that's G. This kind of option G gives you copyright. So if you turn on here, this is giving you all those weird types of symbols that you didn't know existed and couldn't find on your computer keyboard. Actually helpful sometimes, but most of the time, no. But when you need them, you need them. So I keep that up there just for quick access. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this sucker out. Next thing I do is if I use the trackpad, which I don't, I use a mouse. And I don't actually like the Apple mice. And mine's just literally sitting up here right now and not doing anything. I am using a Logitech MX2. They've just come out with the MX3, but the MX3 is a wonderful mouse. I love this thing. It's much better than the Apple mouse. There's nothing wrong with the Apple mouse, but not my favorite. Now, if you do use the Apple mouse, they do have a little button. And right here, it says primary mouse button. Notice this is left. But on the Apple mouse, it gives you a selection to actually right click. So on a Mac, to right click, you usually you have to hold the control and then you click and it will let you right click. Well, you can click this little button if you're using the Apple mouse and it will allow you to right click on that mouse. So it doesn't look like it has a right click button, but it does. You just have to turn it on. So that's something that I definitely use. That's basically it for what I'm using inside of system preference. Obviously I'm setting other items. Those are just specific to me. All right, so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the apps and what are some apps that I use? And the first one is gonna be located right here in the app store. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is move this window up here and bam, that is actually Magnet. Magnet has a very similar function to an aspect of this window. So I'm gonna actually move this away. Notice we have two windows here. If you come and you hover over the little green area on an icon, and what we're going to do here is kind of press and hold and notice it says enter full screen. It will make it full screen, but I can also tile this to the left and the right. So I'm going to tile this to the right and I'm just going to let go and notice it put it on this half of the screen and then I can come over here and I can select that one and it puts this on that half. Now that is the Mac doing that and I can slide and adjust these back and forth. And if I want to get rid of them, all I got to do is come up here and click this little button and then that's gonna disappear and go away. All right, so we're back here. Now Magnet does the exact same thing, but it's a whole lot better at it because you have a whole lot more options. If I wanna take this and put it on top of the screen, I'm just gonna lift up here and it's gonna fill it full screen. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different options here at 
you can tile the windows. And it also gives you quick keys to be able to do it. So if we come up here to magnet and I open this, you'll notice it's, it's highlighted right now, but here's all the different options and all the different quick keys that you can do. And you can come in here to the preferences and you can change the quick keys and do anything that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and we're gonna go and just take this window and we're gonna move it down a bit. And then we're gonna take this and pop it over here on the right side. I'm gonna take this one and pop it over there. And just like that, using magnet, I did the same thing as the little green arrows, but it's a whole lot faster. And if you have more than two windows, you're kind of screwed on a Mac, but with magnet, you can kind of tile them any which way that you want. Very helpful. That is magnet. And we're gonna to go to the next thing here, which is copy clip. So we're gonna to go to copy. Now copy clip is a clipboard manager and we'll go ahead and just make this full screen so that you can see it. And what this allows you to do is copy multiple items. So the problem with uh, the clipboard, so you copy something, you can only copy one thing at a time. With this, we can come in here and we can copy multiple items. So what I need to do is get out of this here so you can see how it works and we'll switch over to this guy. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy some things. So we're gonna copy this and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna copy this. And then if we come up here and we go to copy clip, which is this little clipboard right here, notice here's the different things that I've been copying over time. And the way that I use them is this is command zero, command one, two, three, four, five. And that way I know which one of those items that I will be pasting to that location. Now you can come in here and make this however you want. Right now I have it so it only saves 10, but you can come in here and, and make it so it does 20, 40, 60, as many as you want. You can also add exemptions. So you can see I've exempted some Adobe and Photoshop things. Why well, don't want it copying these massive large files when I'm doing a copy and paste inside of Photoshop. I'm more looking for text and items like that. I have certain things or certain items or places where I'm never gonna be copying and pasted and I make those exempt so the computer doesn't accidentally do that while I'm working on it. We'll go ahead and close that out. We're gonna close this window back down so it's small. We're gonna click back over here and that is copy clip. The last one we're going to take a look at is probably the most popular. And if anybody's heard of one, it's going to be this. So we're going to go to Alfred. And so Alfred is right here and we'll bring him up. Alfred is like Spotlight. So if any of you have seen Spotlight, if you hit command space bar, it brings up Spotlight and then you can search for anything. So if I want disk utility, I start typing and bam, just like that disk utility starts and I can hit return and disk utility will appear that's a really cool function. Spotlight lets you search for a variety of items. You can search for images or anything you want. Unfortunately, it basically, and there's nothing wrong with Spotlight. It actually works pretty good. However, Alfred is way better. So I'm going to hit the alt option button in spacebar, and that brings up the Alfred search. Now it works just the same way and you can change the quick keys. So it's still the command spacebar if you'd like. No big deal. It will find your files anywhere that you put them and it will also let you search on the internet. So if I want to find out about elephants, and elephants, bam, just like that, it's going to do a Google search and it will find elephant on the web. So I can search for the web. I can search for files and I can come up here to Alfred and I can come out down to the preferences. And we can't make this super huge, but once again, we have some general ones. Uh, here's your hotkey to set it up. So here's some of the features that you get. There is a free version and a paid version. I'm just using the free version I always have. And I can select what type of images or files that I want it to find. And what I love, not only is it search my computer, it'll also search external hard drives at the same time. So you can see I've added two external hard drives right there and it will look for those at the same time. We can change the appearance and then we have an advanced mode as well. So that's Alfred, it is a search engine and I absolutely love it. We're gonna go ahead and close this out. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at and we're gonna make this, uh, we'll leave it small because we need to bring something else up. 
and I'm going to do this really simply. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the finder and you're going to go to applications and you're going to scroll down to the bottom and you want to get utilities. That is important. Obviously you can do a search to find this as well. And what you're looking for is this little guy right here. Make this bigger, which is terminal. See terminal right there. We're going to double click him and launch that. And then up comes terminal. Now, a lot of people look at terminal and can get scared because it looks like you're writing code into your computer, which kind of you are, but it's a way to change the way your computer or certain aspects function. So one of the things that I have a problem with is when I'm using this and we're just going to go to documents by default, when you would go to documents, it would just say documents up here. If you notice, I have the path. A lot of times I search for an image, but I don't actually know where it is. And I need to know the path of where it's located. So what I'm doing is telling the computer using a terminal command to show the path every time I open the finder. Anything that I click on, so if I go to pictures, it's gonna show me the path. If we go to screen capture and open that, it's gonna show me the path of where I'm located at. All you need to do, and this is really easy, you just need to copy and paste this stuff in. So I could just take this, not the press enter, and I'm gonna copy that. So just copy, and then I would come over here and hit paste, space, and then I could hit enter. Now the first part is, is for changing the path, and this is kind of restarting your finder. That's all that's doing. I know it looks scary. It says kill all. You're not gonna hurt your computer. And then you would hit enter. Now I'm not gonna hit enter because I've already done this, and so it's not gonna help me. So what we're gonna do is just kind of go ahead and we will delete because I need to show you the second one. Now, once you would hit enter, you don't need to delete anything. You can automatically just go ahead and paste in the next command. You can do this one, this one, this one, all in the same thing without ever having to erase anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna get this next one. Now, this next one changes the screenshots location. So by default, a Mac saves all your screenshots down here. And I hate that. So what we're going to do, and you saw just a second ago, I had it there. So I went to pictures and then I have screen capture and all my screen captures are right here. So what I did is I went into pictures folder and I created a new folder. And then once I had that new folder, we're just going to move this down here. I came over here and I pasted in this command and then I hit the space bar. So notice space bar, not return because you need a space for this. And then you just drop the folder in. This gives it the path of where it's located. You hit space, and then once again, then you would just hit enter, and it would apply that. And now, when I do a screenshot, they're gonna be saved in this folder versus on my desktop, which I can't stand, because it gets cluttered with screenshots. So once again, we're gonna go ahead, and I'm not gonna enter that. The last one that we have is right here, this defaults, right, com, apple, screen capture, type, JPEG. By default, the Mac actually uses a PNG, which is kind of a large file. I don't want to have these massive screenshot files. So you can change it to a JPEG. You can change it to a TIFF. If you want TIFF, you would just do TIF. If you wanted PNG, you just do PNG. So anything that you would want to change it to. Just going to copy that in here and then hit enter and you are done. So let me show you how that works. So we'll go ahead and open up screenshots and we're going to take a screenshot here. Now the first screenshot command is Shift three. Now command shift three takes a screenshot of the whole entire screen of everything that's going on. So you can see it just uploaded that screenshot right there. The next one is command shift four. And there's two ways to do command shift four. So command shift four, and it gives you a little crosshair. You click, hold and drag on what you want to make a screenshot of. You let go and bam, just like that, it saves the screenshot and it's going to put it over here. All right, the last one is command shift four, just like we did before. But this time, if you go in a window and then you hit the space bar, it highlights it and gives you this little camera. And then you click with your mouse and that will take a picture of just this window. That is how you do screenshot. Well, that's basically it for how I set up my computer. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.